a rare bucket list find that I wasn't sure even existed. Well, welcome to Finding America. It is really nice to see you here. Now, this turned out to be an amazing day of metal detecting with awesome finds from start to finish. I decided to go back to a new permission that I featured in last week's video. So I got up bright and early and I headed down to that huge empty lot and parked my SUV down by the river. Well, I geared up right away and grabbed my MindLab Equinox 800 that I got from our friends at Kellyco and started swinging. Well, this first hunt started off with a bang and ended with a very memorable hole. And I really hope you enjoy watching this one. Well, I'm running the uh, big coil because I'm gonna head to the back of this lot and the signals aren't as thick back there and I want to cover a little more ground with each sweep back there. But I thought I'd start up here in the front and believe it or not, I'm uh, pretty much starting the hunt off the way I started off last time. I got a nice signal right here and check it out. Another great seal button. <laughs> well, I guess it could have been a toy car, but uh, nope, it's another great seal button. And like the one that I found last time, it's iron backed, which is pretty cool. I don't, I don't remember finding too many of those. So very nice, and uh, hey, I'll take that. Well, this one was giving me a big high tone. I dug down, it wasn't very deep, but I wanted to show it to you, even though it's kind of mangled up. It does appear to be an old toy, but this one appears to be a much older toy. I just can't quite make it out. I don't know if it's a bus, but it's definitely, definitely, I think, uh, much older than the ones I found here before. So I get it cleaned up, see if I can make heads or tails of it, but that gives me hope that uh, maybe there's uh, some older ones out here as well. Well, it looks like I have another one, another toy car that is. But it was pretty deep, about six, seven inches. It's actually upside down in the hole. I just wanted to show you it. I haven't looked at it yet. It is popped loose. Oh, get out. Ah, well, let me tell you something. I am really thrilled to find this one, if it's what I think it is. I've always had a soft spot for these cars. I used to have a King Cobra, and I believe this is gonna be a Mustang II with a wide body on it. That is very cool. And that's gonna be like 77, 78. That is awesome. It kind of reminds me of a special package they had them called the Monroe Handler, which is really, really rare. But I think that's what it is. No matter what, it's a nice old one. Very cool. Well, I'm back at the rear of the property and that's the railroad tracks about 20 feet above me. And this was the area that I wanted to bring the big coil to to cover a little more ground. Seems like I'm finding most of the old stuff in this area. And uh, I got that D-ring in the last video. And let me tell you, I think I got something else pretty cool. It was deep, deep, uh, 10, 11 inches. And let me shoot this bee away. We got a lot of ground bees here, so I have to be careful. But look what popped out all the way down there. It looks to be a complete compact. I haven't pulled it out until now. Hoping this one has some design on it. But look at that, it's complete. Ah, that's great. Well, let me uh, 
I'm gonna go ahead and spray it out because I'm kind of curious and I'll give it a brush. Honestly, I think I can see some wording on this one. It might be pretty impressive. At least I hope so. Oh, it's a good one. Now that's early 1900s right here. Uh, and it's gonna be a princess pat. Let's see if you can get this in for you. There we go. Yep, you can see the crown above it and princess pat logo. That was a pretty, uh, pretty big uh, makeup manufacturer back in the day. Well, Princess Pat is actually a very real person. She was the granddaughter of Queen Victoria and heir to the British throne and the daughter of the Governor General of Canada, Prince Arthur. Due to her mother's ill health, she often traveled with her father to official functions. She was young and beautiful and quickly became the darling of Canada. In fact, she was so beloved by the people of Canada, they actually named a light infantry battalion after her that was assembled and sent to fight in France during World War I. As a princess, she was expected to marry a man of title. And she was matched with several men who had royal titles, but she ended up falling deeply in love with a commoner, a naval officer named Alexander Ramsey. Well, in order to marry Alexander, she had to surrender her royal title and renounce any claim that she had to the British throne. And in 1919, she did just that. It was a storybook tale that touched the hearts of many, and Princess Patricia became the new symbol of romance for a world that was struggling to recover and move on from the horrors of World War I. And Alexander and Patricia, well, they remained happily married for the rest of their long lives. Well, this is why I always wear gloves <laughs> when I'm digging. I got a nice pen that still had the pen. So it looks like like a Happy Holidays Christmas pen. Still has the uh, jingle bells hanging from it. I'll get it sprayed off and cleaned up when I get back home. I think it says Happy Holidays. So pretty cool. We're getting close to that season. Well, the wind is picking up. I think we have the hurricane. The first little band starting to approach us here. And the winds are picking up a little bit. But uh, got something interesting here. It was giving me a 20. And this is what came out of the hole. And then an oddball. It almost kind of reminds me of some type of a contact. But I just don't know. Well, I don't know if this is going to be anything or not. It was giving me an 18. It's about four or five inches down, but that's what it looks like so far. And I, I was starting to think maybe it was a skeleton key. I don't know. It looks pretty old. It's going to take me a while. This ground is super hard under this tree, but it, it looks like it's almost pointing straight down at an angle at least. But. I'm going to keep on working on it, but I want to show it to you just in case it turned out to be something interesting. Well, actually, it is kind of interesting. It's not a skeleton key, but I I freed it up. Let me turn my pinpointer off here. And check it out. That is pretty darn cool. Now, this is a comb for African-American women back in the day. Now, they would heat these up and... Uh, it would actually straighten their hair, but very cool, uh, late 1800s, early 1900s, they actually used this style for a long time, so sometimes it would go into the 30s and 40s, but that is what that is. If you ever dig one of these up with the metal, all metal comb, 
that's what it is. It would have had a wooden handle here. Some of these actually plugged in, but a lot of times they heated them over a stove or a fire. Well, this one was giving me a 19 to 20 uh, high toning, but unfortunately, although it is a ring, it's not any kind of precious metal. Let me see if I can get up on this for you. Probably one that came out of a bubblegum machine. It's kind of deteriorated on the bottom here, but eh, not too bad, I find. Well, we have another mystery solved this week, thanks to all of you watching last week. You might recall the very odd thing that I found in last week's video. Well, many of us thought it was some sort of air tool, but it wasn't. That crazy find had all of us fooled, except for one person, Drew, who was watching and let me know that what I'd actually found was part to an old crow's foot battery. Well, these early crowfoot batteries were first used by the railroad all the way back in the 1800s to power their telegraph systems. Now, each of these batteries produced one volt, and usually they would have several of these batteries set up in the basements of the stations. So, a huge thank you goes out to Drew and everyone else that helped make this mystery find a mystery solved. Well, this one was giving me a big 24 signal, and sure enough, another toy car. This one is going to be some kind of a, uh, it might be a matchbox here, a little fire truck here, but uh, hey, one more for the collection. Well, I tell you, there's one thing better than an old toy car in the hole, and that's another one. Hey, you know what's better than that? When there's two more of them. <laughs> And there might be more. I don't know. I just popped these loose. <laughs> There's a fire truck. Oh, yeah. Oh, we've got the Cheerios NASCAR. Boy, that one's in pretty good shape, too. And we've got another one. Oh, the Python pickup truck. <laughs> that is insane. Oh, my gosh. And there's more. Uh, scraping around without my gloves. Yep, I feel. Look at that. <laughs> oh, is that a Mach 3? Wow. Yeah, I think I think that's a Mustang Mach 3. That's going to be like 1994. Yep, sure is. Check it out. Mach 3. Yeah, that was a concept car when the 94 Mustang came out. Right around that time, I believe. Holy cow, four cars, one hole. Oh my gosh, and there's more. <laughs> Jeez. Let's see if I can pop them, but. Oh my gosh. I found, I found the Heidi hole. Yeah, there it is down there. Oh wow, look at that. Can you see that? It says Hot Wheels down there. <laughs> How cool is that? Oh, I'll tell you. Well, if you can't find any rare old coins, this definitely helps. Ah, oh, check it out. That's a Hot Wheels NASCAR. So there you go, there's five. Oh my gosh, it's a whole parking garage. Unbelievable. Truly is. <laughs> I don't think I've dug this many out of a hole before. Holy cow. What is this? Ah, this one's this one's kind of big. Okay, I think I popped it. Oh, oh my gosh! Where do you see this? <laughs> it's a toy car and a toy toy car and a toy motorcycle together. Oh my gosh! Look at that. That's a Dodge, maybe uh, Intrepid. I don't know. 
Holy cow. Look at the size of that motorcycle. <laughs> That's insane. I think it's going on over here. Well, I put my glove back on to dig some more. And I got this one out. And this one's going to be a Beetle convertible. Wow. That's one, two, three, four, eight cars. I think I got them. Well, that's pretty awesome. That is, uh, that is one heck of a spill. <laughs> Well, right after I finished digging that crazy horde of toy cars, a man showed up and started mowing the lot. And I can tell you one thing, mowing and filming, they don't go hand in hand. So I decided to leave and head over to the other new permission I featured in last week's video, that small 1930s house, and see what else I could find over there. Well, you know what they say, everything happens for a reason. Now I'm in the backyard of that 1930s house where I got that really cool trinket box over here with that mother of pearl lid or, and I just got a 24 right here. And I think I got something pretty cool in the hole. I don't know what it is yet. It's big and it's round. So I'm grabbing the camera, we're gonna find out. It's huge. I mean like big, big. Look at that. Oh. Oh my God, holy cow, I did it. I finally, oh my God, I, I finally did it. Oh my Lord, look at that. It's the dollar token to the old grocery store. Oh, look at how big that is. Oh my, oh my Lord, that is awesome. Good for one dollar in trade at BWD Gorels. Oh my gosh. I just can't believe it. I didn't, honestly, I, I didn't think I'd ever have a chance of finding this one. Wow. So now all I'm missing is a quarter, and I believe they had a five cent token. I'm not entirely positive, but. Oh, I'm sorry. I just can't get enough of this. Look at the size of that thing. Oh, that's so awesome. And it's right across the street from where I got the uh, 10 cent token a couple videos ago. Oh, uh, I'm, ju I'm, I'm just going to, I'm just going to stare at this one for a little while. I am just so excited to finally gotten the dollar token. Well, that $1 Gorels token has been on my bucket list for a very long time, even though I really had no idea if they'd ever even made one. I just figured they must have, and I hoped one day that I would find one. So you can imagine my shock when I saw that in my hole. And I am so glad to finally be able to add that white whale to my collection of Gorel grocery store tokens. Well, I was getting a 15 right next to this stack of ties here, and I uh, only went down a couple inches. Then I saw this pop out. Isn't that cool? Now, it's kind of uh, eroded away over the years. I thought it was a brooch. Oh, I should have to be careful with it. But it's actually like two-sided. That is a really wild looking piece. I'm not even sure what it was. I was going to say incense burner, but it's not even big enough, really. That is an odd duck right there, but I like it. It definitely has some age to it. Well, got a 22, and this might look familiar if you saw the last video. Another ribbon dental cream from Colgate. And I'm starting to think these are sample sizes because uh, this is the third one that I found in this yard so far. <laughs> That's going to be from the 40s and 50s.
Well, I noticed something when I was swinging by. Uh, these canna lilies, they just planted these this, this year. And I think when they planted them, they might have brought something up. I'm going to bring you down here. I thought I saw a marble down here. Yeah, <laughs> looky there. I sure did. That's awesome. Oh, it's really nice. You can see the swirls in it. But it's uh, predominantly a blue marble. But Oh, no, looky there. Check out that. Little brown swirls in it. It is perfect. Well, I'm going to have to tell them I'm glad they planted those. <laughs> <laughs> they unearth a beautiful marble. I mean, this one is perfect. Well, this is kind of a cool little signal right here. I think we dug one of these up. I don't know. I think it was a couple years ago I dug one of these up. And at first I was like, what the heck is that? And then it dawned on me. But it's giving me a 24 to 25 signal. And check it out. I believe that's an old telephone uh, key fob to a keychain. Yep, it is. Yeah, I found one of these uh, a long time ago. I don't think it was Chris. I think I, I think I found one of these. But uh, yeah, it's got some a lot of writing on the back and everything. Very cool little advertising piece. I don't know if it was a uh, Bell uh, Bell telephone or. But they're pretty old. I'll get it cleaned up and get you a better look at it. But I love these. These are really a cool little find. Well, I had a heck of a day, and I went home with a ton of great finds, and I was so thrilled to have finally found that long-sought bucket lister. Now, don't go anywhere just yet. I have some amazing images to share with you in just four seconds. And remember, it's history that makes a find a treasure, and I can't wait to see you back here next week on Finding America. Mm -hmm.